That's what the Spirit-filled life is all about. It is being in complete alignment with the will of God. We've been studying the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and we've looked at love, which is what you do. We've looked at joy, which comes from the inside out. Uh, we've looked at uh, peace, uh, which is meaning that we let the Spirit of Christ or the peace of Christ rule in our life. And then today, our favorite has come. Patience. I wish my girls were here for this. <laughs> they have heard me say the title of this sermon many, many times, and they're growing up in the Kessler house because when everyone was kind of getting a little tense or losing their patience, I would say, patience is a virtue. And so that what kind of uh, inspired this title for today. What is a virtue? It's a behavior showing high moral standards. It's the ability to wait on something without being upset. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't wait very well, and uh, I certainly am not a great example. My driving is not a great example of this uh, virtue. Hebrews 10.36 says you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. So patience has to do with perseverance. It's keeping the right goal, the right person in front of us. It's waiting on God. You see, with God, there is a time of waiting between when we ask Him for things and when we receive from Him. And another word for patience is found in your New King James Version or your King James Version, and it is the word long-suffering. Okay, A lost art, the ability to suffer. That's not the goal. That's not the American dream, is it? We're supposed to be seek seeking happiness, the pursuit of happiness, right? And yet, the Bible is so clear over and over again that there's going to be suffering and frustration in this life. So the question is, how patient are you? How do you do with interruptions? Well, I'm going to tell you, the whole time I was working on this sermon Monday, people kept interrupting me. My kids kept interrupting me, asking me questions and stuff. And I just thought, man, I'm getting irritated just studying the word patience, okay? I mean, try to get something done. How do we react? Not always very sweet. How do we deal with irritations like traffic and long lines and inconveniences. See, we like everything fast. Fast food and fast loans and fast tax refunds. And we want it, and we want it now. Do you know that on average we spend six months of our life at the stoplight? You know what's funny about that? is if you're the person who's in front sitting at the light and the light turns green, if you don't immediately go, the person behind you turns red. <laughs> I mean, we expect things to go just like this. And so the question is, why do we have irritations? Romans 5.3 says, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, okay? You see, the obstacles in our life are really opportunities, and we need to always look at it that way. It's an opportunity for growth. It's more than just grinning and bearing it. It's about what I'm doing while I wait. While I'm waiting on God to answer my prayer, while I'm waiting on something to happen, it's an opportunity to praise the Lord. It's an opportunity to be in a spirit of thankfulness. Because, you see, if we don't keep 
patience in the forefront of our thinking and in the forefront of the way that we live our life, we're going to quit before the end comes. And if you quit before the end comes, then that is the definition of failing. We've got to have that spirit, that attitude of never giving up. I have the greatest friend. His name is Jimmy Reynolds. I was his student pastor uh, in Oklahoma. He served with me as our student pastor at Trinity for seven years. Uh, He's living in Oklahoma right now. But he is just one of those personalities that I just love and respect because the whole world could be caving in and Jimmy's happy. Everything is falling apart and Jimmy is always upbeat and positive. And that's the kind of people that I like to be around. It's folks that understand that, yeah, it might be a tough moment right now, but it's going to get better because we've got Jesus Christ to carry us through. When you run the 100-yard dash, you can be way ahead of all of the other runners. But if you quit before the finish line, you still lose the race. So I want us to look at qualities of patience. And I want to ask the question, how would you like to have a mature faith in Jesus Christ? The way that you have a mature faith is to operate in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And when you operate in the fruits of the Holy Spirit, you will have victory in every circumstance. You will have everything that you need. It all comes from patience. So, the first thing that I want you to see today is that patience is necessary for maturity. It says in James chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You see, perseverance is another word for patience. Our faith is going to be tested. Those irritations and inconveniences are all about us growing up. There's nothing worse than to have lived 60, 70, 80, 90 years and still be a big baby. You've got to be able to mature in your faith. And so, we develop patience by having trials, by having difficulty. You're not going to have maturity without patience. I mean, are children patient? (laughs) Absolutely not. To tell a child to wait is the same thing as telling them no. They just can't handle it. They want it now. If we sail through life with very few problems, it may not yield very much maturity. And so the opposite is true. If you've had a lot of difficulty and a lot of struggle and a lot of problems in your life, then it is probably, if you've passed the test, it's probably advanced you to the next level and you have matured. You know when troubles come, you know what we pray? Lord, take this trouble away. But is that really the right prayer? How about, Lord, give me the wisdom to handle this difficulty? How about asking the Lord to give you the wisdom to pass the test? See, I call it God's school. And the great thing about God's school is you don't get to fail out. You just get to keep taking the test over and over and over again until you pass it. And I don't know about you, but I want to pass the test the first time. I don't want to have to take it over and over again. And when we pass the test, then we advance to the next level. Another thing that I want you to see about the fruit of patience is that patience is necessary for victory. James 1.12 says this, 
Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. What is the crown of life? What well, is an analogy referring to the crowns that were given at the Greek Olympic Games? They were the rewards, kind of like a medal that uh, folks get in our Olympics. And the Bible says that we're going to gather crowns for the good things that we do as believers and that eventually in our worship, when we're all together uh, after all the, the raptures come and the wrath of God has come and Jesus has come again and the church is gone to be with Him, that we're going to lay all of those crowns at the feet of Jesus. Well, one of the ways that you get a crown is with patience. It's called perseverance. A child in the faith is not going to have victory. It's only going to be someone who is mature. If you're a child as a believer, then you're always going to be the victim. And, you know, I've seen the difference so many times in, in, in my ministry and, and, and what the Lord has given me opportunities to do. Some people who have been through so much and they're so bitter... And then some people that have been through so much and they're still just praising the Lord and just rolling on through life like nothing has ever happened. It, it's what separates the men from the boys. It's the understanding uh, that in the end we're going to have the victory. Proverbs twenty five twenty eight says this, Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. I mean, do you understand this picture? It's people without the control of the Spirit in their life. They're so immature that they have no patience at all. And it's like a city without walls. Uh, thugs and thieves can c come into the city and go out of the city without being stopped and thwarted in any way. And so, in other words, it's the picture of the enemy moving into our lives and out of, the li of our lives because we allow him to because we do not have the spiritual gift of patience. By the way, notice the walls, just a little hint there. That's what the devil does. He moves in and out of our lives, leaving a mess. He does it with our marriage. He does it with our children. He does it with our businesses. He does it with our community. He does it in our church. I mean, just yesterday I was talking to someone who lives in another town that was talking about the struggles that their church had been through, and they were telling me, you know, we'd get a new pastor and things would be going great, and then all of a sudden something would happen. And then that pastor would leave, we'd get another pastor, and things are going really great, and then something would happen, and then it would all fall apart. And I'd say, yes, that was the enemy. That was Satan attacking the church. Listen, we've got to always put on the full armor of God, and we've got to exercise the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and one of those is patience, perseverance, and that's how we keep the enemy from moving in and out of our lives and our families and our church. We are to endure, and when we endure, we will mature. So when the enemy comes against you, what you need to do is to start praising the Lord. The Bible says that in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, give thanks in all circumstances. So just think about something that's going on in your life right now. It could be something that's from God. It could be something that is not from God. Either way, the Scripture says we're to be thankful for it. And it is when we are thankful for it that the, enemy, I mean, that the Lord is able to take what the enemy has done and bring good out of it. Or the Lord can help you have the perseverance to pass the test that He's allowing to come 
your way. Isaiah 40, 31, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yeah, did y'all learn that song? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We wait. I think I messed up the last two lines. But it was something like that. That's an old song. It just came to me. Okay? Patience. The third thing is patience is necessary for prosperity. Look at James 5, verse 7. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains? You too, be patient, stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Farmers understand patience. You wait on the harvest. You wait for your crop to come in. Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Now what's the law of harvest? You reap and then you sow? Actually, it's more than that. You reap more than what you sow. You see, farmers plant seed. This scripture says the autumn rains come. The seed it swells up in the ground. A plant comes up out of the ground, and it grows. And then the farmer, you know, it's corn, cotton, tobacco, whatever he's raising. He waits. Spring rains come, okay? And he waits. And then when it's just right, when things are ripe and ready, he gets a harvest. And see, what we often do is we quit w waiting. We give up. We stop instead of persevering. Because I'm telling you, there is a crisis of belief. There is a moment when things get tough. And you got to keep your positive attitude. you got to keep pressing the future. you got to keep going when you know that you are in the will of God and you are living by the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like when we were kids and in our neighborhood and we used to like, to, uh, after dark, late at night, run up to someone's house and ring the doorbell and then run away. Did you ever do that? And then hide in the ditch. We had ditches in my neighborhood. We'd hide in the ditch and watch them come to the door and start looking around. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about a time we were camping at Beaver's Bend with a group of folks from Trinity. And um, we, there's a hill above the section that's on the river where we camped. And uh, there was a family that had already gone to bed early. And we would go down and trip his breaker and turn off his air conditioning and then go stand up on the hill and watch him come out and turn it back on. We did that three or four times. He's still trying to figure out what's tripping the breaker. He never knew it was us. But anyway, that's what happens, you know. The Lord, you know, his angels, you know, they're sending us an answer. But we give up before we receive it, you know. And this scripture says you cannot give up until when? Somebody see it? Till the Lord comes. You can't give up. Delays are not denials. God wants us to wait so that we'll grow. With God, timing is more important than time to think about that timing is more important to him than time in the 1800s there was a church planted the lone star church in india the church in 15 years had 10 converts to jesus christ they wanted to quit Samuel Smith, who was the writer of the hymn, My Country, Tis of Thee, was on the board for this church. 
he persuaded them, don't give up. Thirty years after that, it was a church of 15,000 people. Can I say to us right now, don't give up. Wait on the Lord. His timing is best. He knows what He is doing. Isn't that right? Can I hear an amen? Are y'all awake out there? Oh, man, I'm telling you, I'm, y'all, I'm sweating blood up here. <laughs> Finally, patience is necessary for tranquility. Verse 10 and 11, James 5. As an example, brothers and sisters, of suffering and patience, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as his messengers and representatives. You know we call those blessed, happy, spiritually prosperous, favored by God, who were steadfast and endured difficult circumstances. You have heard of the patient endurance of Job, and you have seen the Lord's outcome, how he richly blessed Job. The Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. The patient person is a blessed person. The patient person is a person of joy. We endure. Sometimes we just need to laugh. You know, laughter is therapy. For instance, did you hear about the day that the devil came to church? He came in the back door in a church similar to ours, and as he came in, the back door, he was so scary that everyone just ran out the door except for one man that was sitting on the front row. And so that man was just sitting on the front row and he was just looking straight ahead. So the devil walked up and he looked uh, straight in that man's eyes and he said, Aren't you afraid of me? And he said, No, sir, because I'm married to your sister. Sometimes we just need to laugh. There's a lot we can't change. You know, I've, tr- I've been traveling on the interstate, and there'll be miles upon miles of cars just stopped, just standing still. Can't do anything about it. What do we need to do? Just crank up the stereo and open up the sun window, uh, you know, the moon window, whatever, I can't think, moon roof, and praise the Lord, you know? I mean, you can't do anything about it. So the fruit of patience is maturity, victory, prosperity, tranquility, which is peace. Notice the sequence of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, Peace, patience. They build on each other. Patience is the composite of love, joy, and peace. Let me show it to you. First off, remember in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, it says love is patience. Love equals patience. Ephesians 4, 2 says be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. If we're not patient, we're not showing love. The problem is not having is not the fact that we lack patience. The problem is we lack love. Because when we're loving, we're not going to be selfish. But when we lack love, we are going to be selfish. We've got to see life from the other person's viewpoint. A successful parent sees life through the viewpoint of their children. A successful businessman sees life through the viewpoint of his customers. A successful husband sees life through the viewpoint of his wife, don't we, guys? Are you all awake out there? If you're loving, nothing, almost nothing, should provoke you. Patience is a loving thing to do, and love is patience. The other part of that, patience also comes from joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength, and it's going to take strength 
in order to endure. It's going to take strength in order to be long-suffering. It's going to take strength to persevere, which is patience. So are you rejoicing in the Lord, or are you grumbling, griping, complaining? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And impatient people do not have peace. All they have is stress. Isaiah 26.3 says this, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. So these first four fruits of the Holy Spirit They cannot be manufactured. We have to remember John 15, 5. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So when we're grafted in the vine, when we're abiding in Jesus Christ, then we can operate in patience. And I'm pointing the fingers at me. I mean, that's like the Lord keeps reminding me of all those things that I'm impatient about, you know? And especially when some slowpoke gets in front of me on a two lane road. The speed limit is 70 miles an hour, and they're going 50. Woo! Man, I need the Holy Spirit to help me with that one. All right. Well, that's patience. And patience, my friends, is a virtue. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word, and it is true. God, I pray that you would help us to uh, be loving, be joyful, be at peace, and have the ability, Lord, to persevere until you come. Some days are going to be good, some days are going to be difficult. But help us to understand the importance of being grafted into you, to being connected to you, because apart from you, we can do nothing. And so, God, I pray that we will be a church that is patient, that we will be families that are patient, that we will be followers of Christ that are patient. And, God, that that patience would be used, would be worked in a way where you always bring good out of it, and where it makes a difference for Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to walk in the Holy Spirit and not in the flesh. In your name I pray. Lord Jesus, I pray for any person in this room that does not know you as Savior. God, I pray that that today they would respond to your gospel and that they would pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. Please come into my life. Become the most important person in my life, more important than my family or my friends or anything I have. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. I love you and want to follow you for the rest of my life. God, if there's any person in this room that has prayed that prayer, they've been born again. I pray that they would let us know their decision. In your name I pray. Amen. Let's stand together and worship.